Hi everyone. This is the next video in the module for chemical bonds. Here we're going to be focusing on covalent compounds. Now covalent compounds are going to be the ones that have two or more nonmetals that are uh, bonded together. They're sharing electrons. And so we talked about how to identify them in the previous video. Now we're going to be looking at writing the molecular formula or naming them. So we are going to be focusing on chemical formulas of covalent compounds and then naming covalent compounds. So remember when we talk about a chemical formula, we are going to have a subscript that indicates the number of each type of atom. So for example, if we talk about water, H2O, it means that there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom every time we have this molecule. We don't write a one. Um, generally, I just say that chemists are lazy. Why am I going to write a one? If I wrote the O, it must be that there's an oxygen. So one is usually just understood. Now if we did something like um, uh, with a polyatomic ion later on, if you have more than one polyatomic ion, you'll have to put parentheses in that chemical formula, but that is just, um, you know, we'll get there. The next one. So go ahead and hit pause and say how much, how many of each of these atoms there are in each of these compounds. And then I'm going to wait for you to say, to start this back up. Make sure that's not this one. Yep, we're good. Okay. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to assume that you have uh, more than an, you've paused it. You're coming back to really um, look at how many of each thing there is. And so let's go through this step by step. So if we look at water, this is H2O. There's two hydrogens and one oxygen. This is phosphoric acid. H3 means that there's three hydrogens. There's no subscript with the P, so there's just one. And then there's four oxygens because we write, wrote O4. For aluminum sulfate, this is two aluminums. This three applies to everything here. So there's three sulfates. Each sulfate ion has one sulf sulfur. So three times one is three. This three applies to everything in the parentheses. So there's three sulfates, but each sulfate has four oxygens. So three times four is 12 oxygens here. For ammonium sulfite, this is two times the one nitrogen is two. Two times four is going to be eight hydrogens. One sulfur and then the subscript of three oxygens. Down here we have two nitrogens. You do not break up polyatomic ions guys. Uh, so we have ammonium and nitrite but they stay as ammonium and nitrite. You don't split them up. So we have two nitrogens four hydrogens and two oxygens. All right, so now that we know how to count atoms within a chemical formula, we need to also look at specifically co covalent compounds. Now remember, covalent compounds are the ones that have two nonmetals bonded together. There's no metal, there's no polyatomic ion here. Just straightforward two, two nonmetals. Now because they can bond together in more than one uh, ratio, we have to specify which compound are we talking about. And so what we're going to do is in the nomenclature we're going to account for that. So we're going to name the first element by its element name. We're going to name the second element by the root of its element name and we're going to change the end of the name to IDE, IDE. We're going to add prefixes to indicate how many of each atom there is, except we're not going to use mono if it's on the first element. That was just um, be superfluous. 
So if you look at this, this is carbon, this is oxygen, so it's going to be oxide. So carbon and oxide, now we have to come back and add prefixes. We don't use mono on the first element. There's one oxygen, so it's monoxide, carbon monoxide. This one, name the element by its element name, so it's just carbon. Oxygen becomes oxide. Now we're going to add a prefix to indicate the numbers. Don't need mono on the first. Dioxide, so carbon dioxide. So the prefixes are here, okay? These are not always um, intuitive, you know, unless you are a math person. One means, if you have a, one of them, you would use the prefix mono, like carbon monoxide. Uh, two is di, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, hexagon, pentagon. If you can think back to Tetris, Tetris had four types of pieces, game pieces that you stacked. Each one of them had four blocks, four for Tetra. Um, triangle has three sides, pentagon has five sides, hexagon has six. Generally, um, sorry, this is not my organic video. Because we are of the class that we're in, we're going to typically stop at six. Um, I do think that there is an example later in, this, in the, this unit where I talk about HEPTA, but it's because it's something you're going to encounter like at the pharmacy or at the drugstore on a regular basis. Um, so application quiz. For some reason you can't see my thing, but go ahead and hit pause and try to name these compounds. It's on your slides. I don't know why it's not showing up here. Okay. So this is carbon. Oxygen becomes oxide. There's only one carbon, so we're not going to write mono. We do need to indicate that there's only one oxygen, so we're going to have mono for oxide. Now I want to point this out. If there's more than one vowel, they typically just drop one carbon monoxide just doesn't sound right so you know or it could takes an extra you know millisecond to say so they drop it carbon monoxide this is sulfur fluorine becomes fluoride make sure you know how to spell guys in your quiz and your mom quizzes especially spelling is an issue you have to make sure it's spelled right don't use mono on the first but there's four fluorines, so this is going to be tetrafluoride, sulfur tetrafluoride. This is sulfur. Oxygen becomes oxide. Two, we're going to add a prefix of di. Four, we're going to add a prefix of tetra. And we're going to get rid of that vowel. Two vowels in a row just gets annoying. So this is disulfur tetroxide. <laughs> Keep. Okay, so we have our names, and now we can go ahead and go to, well, that was different. There we go. Can I write again? There we go. Um, and so now we can kind of go into uh, the next portion where we have both the formula and we're at, uh, give, what, given the name asking for the formula, given the formula asking for the name. So same thing, like I know you guys have the answers, but really try to do this on your own first. Dinitrogen means N2. Pent means 5. Oxide means ox came from oxygen, so O5. Sulfur, we're just going to write sulfur. There's no prefix, so it's an understood one. Oxide, dioxide means that there's two. This is phosphorus. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'm spelled right. Um, fluorine becomes fluoride. Let's make this a lowercase p. Three, we're going to add the prefix tri. So this is phosphorus trifluoride. Um, S2, 
This is sulfur. Fluorine becomes fluoride. Prefix of two is going to be di. Six is going to be hexa. So this is disulfur hexafluoride. Hopefully you can see that these are technically pretty straightforward no nomenclature rules. Um, so as you get into your SQ questions, your sample test questions, the big thing here is to make sure that you know that you have things spelled correctly and you're really paying attention to those subscripts and stuff.